I'm Juan Diego. Welcome to Tegucigalpa, my hometown located in Honduras. This is a place where I was born and raised, just like pretty much like any other normal kid. Juan Diego siempre ha sido un niño eh, bien amigable eh, de mis dos hijos mayores. Él siempre ha sido como bien tranquilo, bien con un carácter bien dulce. My memories are like of him being my best friend. Okay, I always wanted to play with him, okay, in my team and all that, and I will always defend him. And uh, yes, because I'm the older brother and like, I was like very protective about him since little. Bueno, el, el día del accidente fue un 31 de mayo del 2018. Eh, fue aproximadamente entre siete y media a ocho de la noche. Eh, recibí la llamada de, de, de Jackie. Eh, al contestar, ¿verdad? Pues eh, ella se encontraba de una manera bien, bien descontrolada, ¿verdad? Llorando y no, 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 le, no, no entendía muy bien, pero así bien en general, ¿verdad? Que, que Juan Diego había tenido un accidente. Cuando era 13, My mom decided to, to move to a new apartment, which was on a third floor facing the street under construction. So since it was under construction, the apartment wasn't totally finished. There was a window without the glass facing the street at the, at the same height of the light post uh, with some high voltage wires in front of it. And eso, pues, yo solo escucho como un sonido súper fuerte, como una explosión. Uh, y yo veo detrás de mí como un destello de luces. Eh, giro y en lo que yo lo veo, lo veo a él completamente, que el cable lo atrajo a él. Y él um, en, su, en su defensa pues puso las manos. Eh, mi reacción fue como, eh, digo, Juan Diego, lo agarró de la cintura. Um, me lo quería traer hacia mí, pero la, la carga eléctrica era muy fuerte, era como un imán, era imposible despegarlo. Faster than blinking an eye, I just felt like the, all the charge, all the electricity literally going through my body. So it's, it was so fast, you don't have time to react to it. My heart starts rushing like really fast to the point that you feel that it's going your heart is going to explode. And suddenly all the lights turn off and you just kind of feel like in this like lonely cave all by yourself because I was able to hear my mother like scream, you know, because of her worry. Entonces, eh, yo empiezo como a gritar, mi hijo, mi hijo, ayuda, ayuda. Tenía mucho miedo porque por mi mente pasaban muchas cosas. Pensé que él ya no iba a regresar en sí. Alguien le habló a mi hermano, que vive cerca del lugar donde estábamos. Eh, llegó él y yo le dije, por favor, eh, subí y anda por Juan Diego. Luego él subió. So, suddenly, I just woke up, like, really scared, like, <gasps> because one of the neighbor was giving me CPR so I could react. I just saw like five people around me and they were like, are you okay, are you okay? They gave me a cup of water and suddenly I was trying to stand up, but I couldn't. And obviously they didn't let me, so why I can stand up? And I just felt like as if I didn't have no arms because I wasn't able to move it. And that's when I realized and I looked around me and I just said, saw all of my hands, you know, burn. Gracias a Dios, pues, cuando él subió y eh, él bajó de nuevo y ya lo traía él chaneado, ¿verdad? En sus brazos. Eh, yo lo miré que ya venía como un poco más eh, así lúcido. Eh, bueno, nos subimos al carro, él nos subió al carro y nos fuimos, pero de inmediato, pues, al primer hospital que estuviese cerca del lugar pues de inmediato lo sacan en camilla, lo meten en emergencia y a mí me dijeron, eh, eh, quédate aquí en el carro.
y verlo a él, ¿verdad? Eh, en, en, la, en la situación que estaba, pues fue, sí, muy, muy doloroso, ¿verdad? Entonces, eh, de ahí, pues, eh, esperamos por algún un tiempo, ¿verdad? Y los, que el especialista y todos los médicos en, y llegaran y ahí fue, pues, donde lo ingresaron para, para iniciar con la... Day by day, just knowing what to be a burn survivor means and experiencing all the processes, all the pains. I remember one night, I just started to, to experience that feeling of being powerless. One of the nurses called my family and I remember just like 10 persons like trying to fit in, in this little door and they were just like trying to hi, hi, and all of that and I just remember like, you know, like a smile on my face, but tears on my eyes of just seeing them and started to, to see how special they are and started to experience that feeling that um, I'm not alone at that moment. Estamos muy agradecidos porque pues mi hijo quedó con vida, ya íbamos a casa, pero cómo decirle ahora que tenía que empezar como una nueva vida de adaptación para comer, para bañarse, para cambiarse, para escribir, para regresar a su vida. Buscamos en Google eh, hospitales para niños quemados y la primera opción que aparece fue Shriner. Para nosotros era un sueño Los tíos de Juan Diego, porque en ese momento papá y mamá estaban completamente sumergidos a los cuidados de Juan Diego. Eh, ellos se encargaron como encontrar la conexión en Honduras que nos pudiera traer a, a Boston, a donde es la, el, el hospital que lo atendió a él, que le abrió las puertas. Shiner's Hospital. Igual, ¿verdad? En, en, aquella, en, en aquella oscuridad, como que encontramos esa luz, ya, que es le de que, que nos miramos y eh, pues fueron, han sido una parte muy importante, ¿verdad? De, de este proceso tan difícil, porque aquí como que entró otra etapa, ¿verdad? I remember going to my first appointment and they were just like, really like really nice and careful with me like taking my bandages off they understand because at the time i haven't seen my hands my parents just told me you know they have to make some amputations in your fingers but i have never looked at my hands con mucha ternura eh, me llenaba como de mucha um como satisfacción, como mamá, eh, el ver que, que me lo trataban con, con tanto amor hasta el día de hoy. Eh, yo siento que encontramos una familia en Shriner, Boston. I think the first thing I always say about Juan Diego is he has the best attitude that you could ever have. He has um, a great future to look for. He's always looking forward. And I always say he is one of those bright stars that everyone always looks for. I mean, I think it's pretty amazing because the burn had to go from one arm through the other arm and the heart is in between. And usually uh, they'll fibrillate and not survive. And uh, he, of course, did survive. We had to give him a feeling, a sensation. And of course, love to do this in kids because they get such great results. And that's basically doing a nerve graft. So we take nerves from somewhere else in his body and move it into his hand. I would say part of my treatment role in his care was coming out in that sort of form and appearance and improving some of the things that we would look at from a, an appearance standpoint, complementing what functional gains he's already had and helping to soften things up in terms of a lot of his scarring. 
So Juan Diego has a, a, a namaker as being known as the mayor of the hospital. You know, when he shows up, it's almost like there's a motorcade, you know, that's bringing him. It was just after my nerve graft surgery, where I have like this, like really huge scar in my hand. And I remember asking my doctor, doctor, do you think like, am I going to have this scar? And he was just like that serious, like kid, we're surgeons, we don't leave scars in here. Way, like this guy it's, it's something else, and just as as he said, like one month later, like I wasn't able to see the same scar, and to this day, like you don't see any scar in here. So that's the way I can summarize the treatment in in Shriners. Juan Diego is like light in the darkness. Doesn't matter where he is, okay? He will. He always shines. He always brings the best out of everyone. And that's why I think he's a great leader. There's this phrase that we, now we say in our family that uh, the biggest battles are given to uh, God's biggest warriors. And uh, well, that's, uh, that's the battle that uh, was given to Juan Diego. Mi hijo um, me ha inspirado um, a mantener calma, a, a tener fe, mucha fe, porque algo que él siempre guarda en su corazón es la fe, eh, la perseverancia. Obviamente en su momento pues eh, es un orgullo también para, para nuestro país, ¿verdad? De que alguien, eh, un hondureño pues pueda estar involucrado en una de estas actividades, ¿verdad? Y que sea tan valorado, ¿verdad? La verdad que él no deja de sorprendernos, ¿verdad? Y con todo lo que ha pasado, o sea, yo solo le digo, pues, o sea, eh, pues no te, tú no tienes límites, pues, o sea, sigue, ¿verdad? Sigue adelante. Eh, yo sé que eres un elegido de Dios y, y se vienen grandes cosas. Technically, I'm not supposed to be alive. I'm not supposed to have hands. That's just amazes me. The purpose of all of this is to show how good God is in all of this. Coming here, it's like the greatest comeback you can, you can think about. Five years after the accident, as just as good as I am with this attitude, hoping to help so many people with now as an international patient ambassador, it's just like, laughing in the face of this building because it just couldn't stop me because it wasn't me. It was my family helping me, my friends, and overall, just God being sovereign. It's not thanks to me, it's just thanks to all the people that helped me, including, including Shriners, Shriners.